all you sports fans out there in the tubal sphere, welcome to the One Man Sports Rant to Gen 2.0. I am your host, Will, the alternative Kennedy Space Center or Johnson Space Center in Texas sports thrill. We're talking last flight, the last shuttle that we had going to uh, their ground birth here in LA so you're getting a unique you're getting a unique perspective on the local news if you're not from LA you may not have gotten to have seen this for hours I went up to Santa Barbara Malibu over uh, Universal the Hollywood sign a bunch of times it was really cool alright so as usual I'm going to give courtesy to Fox local Fox affiliate which is kind of the Fox it's like Fox's flagship channel anywhere in the country. Fox 11 here in Los Angeles. Yo Mazar does not own these video highlights but does own the concept and all the other original content which I'm not going to have a whole lot of heck of a chance to produce here. Hear it. Most rights reserved. Except I'm just going to give kudos to Fox. For once we're not looking at Fox uh, politics right? We're in, you know, I shouldn't say that. Okay. Alright thanks for watching. You teared up like I did. It's okay. This is also a huge day for the city of Inglewood. I'm going to turn you around, Mary James Metz, because I hear that it may be coming back for another flyover. Talk to us about the feeling in Inglewood. Well, it's great excitement. Think about this. This is like history. And what is it about artifacts that remain on display? This one for about 250 years. It binds generations. There are people that will see this artifact, understand what it was about long after we're gone. So I think that's why everyone's so excited. Now, not to mention the fact that everyone's fascinated by aviation and space exploration. So for our children in Inglewood, for our residents, we're thrilled to be such a big part of this event. Now little boys, they usually dream of becoming firefighters, police officers. You were a chief of police. Did you ever dream of being an astronaut, maybe? Actually, I dreamed of being a fighter pilot. My father was an engineer. He worked uh, in a lot of the space programs, uh, artifacts, when he worked for North American Aviation. So I was involved in science and technology from the time I was a child. So. This is huge to me. Personally. Did your heart skip a beat when it went by? Absolutely. Absolutely. It was great. Now thousands of people were watching live coverage. Thousands of people have taken to the streets all over Southern California, all over California. It's just off. Well, we want to tell them they'll have an opportunity to come and see it when it stops at the Forum on the 13th at around 8 a.m. We're going to have it there for a half an hour. So there's going to be another opportunity to see it up close and personal. We hope people will join us. And it's going to make its way through the streets of Inglewood, too, on the way to the Science Center. Absolutely. You know, it's funny, the uh, the shuttle traveled about 17,000 miles an hour, 5 miles a second, but for its last journey of 12 miles, it's going to take over two days. I think that's very ironic. Only in Inglewood and Los Angeles, exactly. right? Exactly. Only. <laughs> Only in Southern California because the shuttle gets stuck in traffic. Right. Mayor James Budden, thank right. you very much. Thank you very much. Gigi, thank you so much. Here, we'll send it back to you. And Bob, you have a good viewpoint of this as the landing gear is down and locked, the flaps are down, and she is on her final approach. This is the final approach now. We see it coming from the east. It will be landing here on runway 25 right on the south side of LAX. You're watching the final moments of the shuttle Endeavour as it makes uh, its final flight and comes home here to Los Angeles. I had asked some of the folks throughout the morning here, uh, you know, the curators of the Science Museum, some of the astronauts, what should we think about? And beyond the fact that it has flown 123 million miles, 299 space missions, they say, think about all of the people who have worked on this. The astronauts, they say, they're all people who look like someone like you. In fact, I, I believe the first female black astronaut was on the Endeavour. And also think about all of the people who had their hand in assembling this. As you see, Endeavour making its final approach there, yet a very slow and picture-perfect landing that we're watching here and at LAX, slowly touching down. And there it is. Endeavour is home. Welcome to L.A. Gigi, you're standing by with uh, yet another one of the astronauts who is there. Are astronaut there? Garrett, astronaut.
astronaut Garrett Reisman. Astronaut oh, Garrett sure. Reisman, tell me what you're feeling right now as it makes its final approach. I see she's touched down and she's coming to a stop. And it's uh, it's beautiful to see, but it's also sad in a way because this is a machine that was meant to move. It's meant to fly. And this is the last time she'll be moving. Can I just hear your voice, Greg? A little bit. But, but I'm holding it together. I'm, uh, I got dry eyes. I'm like... Uh, like some of the other guys over here that are bawling like babies. Now, I talked to the pilot that was on that first flight, STS-49. He said a piece of his heart is on Endeavor from 1992. A piece of your heart's on that shuttle, too. Oh, sure, absolutely. I mean, I mean, when you launch into space on a, on a vehicle like that, you can't help but become attached to it and in, 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 endow it with kind of human qualities. And uh, and so... How would you describe her? You know June Lockhart of Lost in Space? Yeah, sorry, yeah. She described Endeavor as being sexy and romantic. How do you describe her? Well, I mean, I don't know. Uh, sex and romantic might be one way to describe it, but there's, there's definitely fond feelings. Uh, really fond feelings because she took me up to space and uh, and I got home safely, so uh, I owe her a lot. That's what, that, that's what the other astronauts have told me, too. What's going through your mind as she makes that final approach here? I'm still waiting to see her come from around the corner, but uh, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, just nice to see her coming home to L.A. And, uh, you know, it, here in in my new home, in my backyard as well, and and uh, and, and and so many people here in Los Angeles will we'll get a chance to really appreciate her. Now we're going to be able to see her up close and personal. She's got some war wounds, doesn't she, from the reentry? Oh, she does. She's got some dings and dents. Uh, you know, she's got a lot of miles on her, and uh, and, and some of them show. But uh, she still is good to go. I mean, she really could. You could feel her up, uh, do a little maintenance, and she'd be ready to launch again. Okay, everybody, there's sort of a moment of silence. Everybody has been so talkative, and now everyone is holding a moment of silence as she makes her approach here to LAX, runway 25. She's just smoothly gliding in uh, and, and just appearing now from around the corner. We could, we could see her over the heads of all the assembled guests, and, and uh, it's majestic. It's absolutely majestic. What do you say at the end of a mission? Because this is the end of mission 26. That's right. You just you just uh, congratulate each other. There's no magic words, but you do say you, your final call that you report to Mission Control is Endeavor Houston Wheel Stop. So uh, this is Wheel Stop for Endeavor for the last time. So make that final call for us now. It wouldn't be to Houston. It would be to California. Be to Los Angeles. Make that final call, astronaut Garrett Reisman. All right, that would be uh, Los Angeles Endeavor Wheel Stop. Welcome to Los Angeles, Endeavor. This is your new home, and we already love you. We do. Wow. Beautiful shot. I can tell. <laughs> Oh, uh, maybe a little. Maybe a little. I can hear your voice cracking. I've been talking to you all day. Well, it's, it, it is it is really just a poignant moment, and uh, and she's right in, front, right in front of us now. You're face to face with it. There is definitely emotion. But we're also, you know, it's it's not it's not really sadness. It's it's the sadness, but it's it's, it's it's also optimism for the future. We have a really bright future, and and uh, this is the end of one era, but it's also the beginning of another, and another that's being that's being made right here in Southern. California. I'm now here at working at a company called SpaceX, and we're building our own rocket, the Falcon 9, and our spacecraft, the Dragon, that's going to do what Endeavor did, and it's going to take Americans back into space on an American rocket. And here she makes her final approach right in front of Hangar, and she's, it, from our view, it almost looks like she's a little... Okay, we have a little bit of a break up, and of course, we'll, there we have another shot of her uh, as we're about to have wheel stop for Endeavor uh, in Los Angeles. And uh, fun to hear Gigi was with it? the astronaut. She was bound and determined to she get him to cry. to get him to cry, exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you, but, but, you know, and with that music with Aaron Copeland's fanfare oh for the goodness. common man and, playing and, in the and background. And the American flag and the waving out of the cockpit. I mean, well, really. He was waving, too, because obviously the pilot is still at the controls, so I guess the co pilot got the job to hold the. There's a the flag. flag. Okay. There's a, the final approach now as it comes into the hangar, the hangar area, the orchestra playing, fans waving, taking photographs, red, white, and blue blowing in the breeze, California flag as well. Glorious day for here for all of us here in Los Angeles. A glorious day for aviation history as well. And all the thousands of people who were involved in the shuttle program and in the space program nationwide. Uh, David, your thoughts as you watch this. 
Well, it is the end of an era and, and the big beginning of a new one. You know, it's it's you know you, you want to resist the temptation to think that this is the end. And and I think our best days are before us. We're we're going to build new vehicles. We're going to go new places. Uh, the nation will use this as a means to bring up another generation of of students and uh, engineers, scientists. So. Um, it's going to be a good day going forward, Jerry. And there the wheels have finally stopped. Now we have wheel stop, and we have Gigi again. Gigi? Let me get Jerry's thoughts before we go to Gigi. Jerry? Jerry, go well, ahead. The final yes. call Jerry. after that, Garrett Reisman made it for us. And that's in Los Angeles and Denver. Wheel stop. <laughs> it's here. She's here. She's here. She's here to stay. Describe her to me. Well, she's just towering above us here. I mean, uh, on top of the 747, she's up awfully high. And uh, the other thing you see, she's positioned with her nose pointed up at an angle of attack. So the nose is pointed up into the air, and she still looks to me like she could just leap off of there and go flying. And you would like nothing more than that <laughs> to be aboard, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course. Of course, I'd love to ride her uh, one more time. Now, the scars that we see on her, those are, uh, I, I've been calling them re-entry wounds. Yeah, that's a good description. Uh, she, the heat of re-entry uh, does leave, I mean, it's, it's uh, uh, thousands of degrees Fahrenheit, so, so it does take a toll. Uh, there's wear and tear, you know, she gets a good wash after each flight, but uh, over time it does build up. A lot of the tiles you see and a lot of the other thermal protective system is replaced from flight to flight, uh, but she still uh, she still has her little her little dings and dents and, and uh, discolorations. But she's a beauty. She's a beauty. She's gorgeous. Now, we were talking about earlier about the trip she's going to make through the streets of Inglewood and Los Angeles to get to her final home at the California Science Center. That will happen October, mid-October. No helicopter was big enough to be able to carry her. Oh, no, she's, she's uh, too big for that. She's too big of a so, boat. Yeah, so she's going to have to uh, she's gonna have to drive through and deal with Los Angeles traffic just like the rest of us. Mayor James Butts of Inglewood was just saying she's traveled a million miles an hour almost, and now she's going to travel very, very slowly. That's right. That's right. Uh, it's going to be a slow but very, uh, it's going to be a very proud procession uh, from here to the Science Center, and I'm looking forward to participating in that as well. It's going to be a great, it's be another great day for Los Angeles. And right now what we're seeing here at the airport is everybody whipping out their cell phones and taking a, ca a picture with Endeavor in the background, and I saw astronaut Garrett Reisman take out his cell phone, and, and you took a picture. Sure. I mean, it, that's what you got to do, and it's something I could uh, send out and text out to my friends and family as well. <laughs> very emotional. Okay. Thank you very much for narrating her arrival here for us. My, my Thank you very much. Regina, take here it away. Comes. You excited? Look at that view. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Fighter jets and everything behind us. Uh, escorting it. Well, look, look at all the people waiting. It is. This is what everyone's been waiting for since 4:30 in the morning. It don't wow. get no better than this. Wow. It's flying right above us. That's what it's going to do right now. Perfect spot. Yes, we are. Spot, right? This is amazing. We're in perfect look spot. This is really amazing. Universal Studios, downtown Los Angeles, 
This was just a great sight.